As a consequence, I have come to the conclusion that the passage from Pax Americana to a Pax Judaica, the day one, cannot take place without the Great War. Is a revolution that is changing our world both economically and in terms of security. I think it will also change our politics. And what it is is basically the meeting ground between big data, IT, and connectivity. Everything is being driven from this nexus. Everything. We meet again. How are you? Thank you very much. This has become a habit. Thank you. Azerbaijan's statement about the opening of the embassy in Israel was not a surprise. The Israelis welcomed the decision. George Deek, Israeli ambassador to Azerbaijan, tweeted, Time to open that bottle. He posted a photo of wine flanked by the flags of Azerbaijan and Israel. Not sure whether a bottle of wine was appropriate, as Azerbaijan is meant to be a Muslim country. But anyway, I suppose it could have been non-alcoholic wine. So why did the Azerbaijanis decide to open an Israeli embassy, especially with a right-winged government in power over in Israel? Well, a lot of it has to do with oil and gas exports, which are the foundations of the Azerbaijani economy. The government seeks to develop its resources. The country truly holds enormous wealth and wants to make as much money as possible. Israel today imports most of its oil from Azerbaijan. So Azerbaijan is now a happy Zio pig. Azerbaijan supplying oil and gas to Israel, Israel supplying weapons to Azerbaijan, and Israel is using Azerbaijan as an advanced territory to spy on Iran and to try to destabilize the domestic affairs in Iran. This, these were the three main headlines for this relationship, right? But there's a problem. Azerbaijan is physically located next to Iran and tensions have been growing in their relations, not just because of Iran's position in the conflict between Azerbaijan and Armenia. If you didn't know, Iran supports Christian Orthodox Armenia against Shia Muslim Azerbaijan. But also, Azerbaijan is an important market for arms sales valued at hundreds of millions of dollars and both Azerbaijan and Israel cooperate in the field of intelligence and security, regularly exchanging confidential information about their enemies, mostly the Iranians. And that's why Azerbaijan made the decision to open an embassy in Tel Aviv. It clearly tells us that Azerbaijan is now ready to take an alliance with Israel seriously and the foundations of their alliance is based on Israeli technology, Azerbaijani oil and of course, Iranophobia. If we look back at history, we see that relations between Israelis and the Azeris were established after the collapse of the Soviet Union and they became closer in the last decade. Israeli companies provided high quality weapons to Azerbaijan and Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu visited Baku, the capital of Azerbaijan back in 2016. He signed a number of agreements. Azerbaijan, however, refused to open an embassy in Tel Aviv, despite attempts by the Israelis to convince them otherwise. Not only that, Israel has had an embassy in Azerbaijan since 1992 and the Azeris have only now just decided to open their embassy on occupied land. So what's happened? Why agree to an embassy right now? What has changed? Both Azerbaijan and Iran are Muslim Shia countries, but Israel feels that Azerbaijan is committed to the security of Israel because Azerbaijan has become the biggest outpost for Israeli Mossad intelligence agency. Azerbaijan is the first Muslim Shia country to open an official embassy in Tel Aviv and it's joined the Sunni-led countries of Egypt, Turkey, Jordan, Albania and the United Arab Emirates, Bahrain and Kosovo. The Israelis have literally got Azerbaijan under their foot. Israeli Defense Minister Benny Gantz visited Azerbaijan not so long ago. 
The visit had several goals. One of them was to provide Azerbaijan with technological support from Tel Aviv in exchange for Israel to receive more oil. Military and security issues probably dominated the discussion and I say this because Azerbaijan's army uses Israeli-made shock drones and has a large drones factory built by the Israelis themselves. Israeli electronic companies are currently working in Azerbaijan under foreign registration to create a defense system and develop an IT industry. Iran, on the other hand, claims that Israel is conducting intelligence operations in Azerbaijan. So naturally, the Iranians aren't happy about the alliance between Azerbaijan and Israel. But it's not just the Iranians here. Russia, too, is feeling quite uncomfortable because Azerbaijan moving closer to Israel will now rely less on Russian weapons, which to Russia is a very bad idea. Turkey, on the other hand, is blessing Israel and Azerbaijan. The self-proclaimed caliph, Recep Tayyip Erdogan, has recently normalized ties with Israel because Turkey wants to expand its influence in the east, which is in line with Azerbaijan's desire to create some kind of alliance between Israel and Azerbaijan, especially given Europe's rising energy crisis. If the Israelis provide technology to extract further Azerbaijani oil from the Caspian Sea, then Turkey becomes an energy bridge for Azeri oil and gas to Europe. Israel is the clear winner here. Israel has stood true to its words with its policies developed after its founding in 1948. It's been able to incite hostility amongst the Arabs, using ethnic, racial and religious diversity to excite people against their government and they've been grabbing opportunities around the Arab and Muslim world. More and more Muslim countries are bowing to Israel. It's not just the Sunni countries, but now we have the first Shia country too. Who will be next? Pakistan, the friend of Turkey and Azerbaijan? Will they be able to throw the Kashmiris under a bus? Possibly. If their military is willing to beg for dollars from the International Monetary Fund, then anything is possible. Israel today is seeking influence around the world. It's moving towards the Muslim states of Central Asia in order to create a strong Israeli presence there and create barriers to penetrate the Arab and Islamic world. All this is happening whilst we see Pax Americana weakening. Are Muslim countries intellectually this weak that they can't outsmart Israeli technology and produce their own weapons? That's a question that needs to be answered, especially with all the oil wealth some of these countries have been pumping. They've only produced oil, they've only exported oil and unregulated madrasas to fight wars on behalf of superpowers. The future is dark for these people because the map will be redrawn in the Middle East in the light of Israel's security concerns. It will be in a few years, but it will happen. The Arab and Muslim world will awaken to a new power in the Middle East. And they've been helping it all this time. Pax Judaica. Over and out.